Okay, folks, welcome to my video. <laughs> this is Emily live in my studio. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't mean to scare you, but <laughs> we thought that would be really funny. Okay, so today I am doing a live tutorial. Um, we are... I'm demonstrating how to make this. I just see a little thread here. I'm going to clip that. Can, just double check that can, hear you. can everybody hear me okay? Please give me a thumbs up or let me know if you can hear me fine. Um, Amelia is monitoring comments and stuff, so we need to know if you can hear us. Okay, looks like we're good. All right, so today I'm doing a live um, tutorial. I'm going to whip up this mushroom live in front of your little faces, okay? So this is the finished block. And um, you can see I've already quilted this and I left it like this. I'm gonna put it in a pillow. But then I was like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I wanna make a quilt. Um, Cause my friend Mindy loves mushrooms. Mindy is the one that works for me. She's adorable. Um, she cuts your fabric. So uh, anyway, Mindy loves mushrooms. So I, I've really wanted to make a mushroom quilt for Mindy and call it Mindy's Mushrooms. Um, but, so that's what we're doing. Um, I am using the mushroom. This is the free downloadable mushroom pattern that is available on my website at collagequilter.com. And we also, for a limited time, have the pattern available in a kit. So if you purchase the kit, it comes with all the fabric that you are gonna see me use today. And this is what the pattern looks like, instructions, and then the, the download, as well as a packet of Steema Seam. So this is the mushroom kit that's available for a short time on our website. It is 23 bucks, right? Super cheap, super affordable. So if you wanna give that a try, you can. If you just wanna go the free route, free route go to my website and pick this up. Um, it's a free download when you sign up for my newsletter. Okay, oops, here, take that. That was getting burned on my iron. Um, <laughs> okay, let me show you how I have my, my space set up. So I have all of my fabric here. Um, you can see this right here. Here's all my fabric. You, you can see I've already cut into it because we provide more than enough fabric to make the kit or to make the mushroom a couple times. So these are all the mushrooms that I've made plus plus, plus this one. So you've made three. I've made three full mushrooms and I'm gonna make the fourth mushroom in front of your very eyes right now. Hopefully I don't run out. I think we've got enough fabric to finish this off. Um, the, what, the other items that I have, I've got my scissors handy. I've got my, uh, my iron that's hot sitting on its little silicone mat. And then I have my tweezers here because I love those. So uh, let's get started. So I've already drawn this out and peeled it off. I'm just gonna leave that there. And the, when I'm working on something, I like, to have, I like to have it traced onto my parchment paper and I will pin this in place. And then I like to have the reference, the gray tone reference, the gray tone guide right next to me. So now I'm just gonna dig in. Um, one thing too, I am going to kind of sort my, actually, I'm gonna sort my fabric a little bit so that I can see where my, um, Amelia, I need, I miss, I'm, so I'm, I've used up some of the gray. Okay. I need that gray. So can you just double check that we, and I'll get started on the mushroom cap while you make sure we've got a little bit more gray. I think there's one more dark gray in the kit. So I would like that ready to go. Um, okay, so we're just gonna dig in here and I'm gonna start with the darkest that comes in the kit. And you guys can ask questions as I work and I will kind of narrate and put it in high gear so you can watch this happen. In the next 30 minutes, here we go. The first few pieces 
of fabric that I apply to the um, to the collage, I, I press them with the iron to make them stick because the parchment paper is non-stick, heat resistant, and so it's um, it requires warming up that glue a little bit so that it just doesn't slide all around. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to move that there. Actually, I'm going to go like this. There we go. So I'm kind of careful not to not to press the pieces together quite yet. I want to leave them um, independent from each other. I will only press them once I've once I have completed the, the collage and I'm happy with it and I don't want to make any changes. So I'll demonstrate that in just a second. Is it this one? Yes, please. Thank you. So you can see that my, um, my cuts, the way I do collage, they are, my cuts are very random. Well, mostly random. I mean, you saw how I rounded the edge uh, as I'm trying to make it fit within this shape. I will round the edges, but a lot of these are, I'm just going to um, leave them. They're, they're very, they're very, uh, no rhyme or reason to the shape. And I can just kind of twist it around and just kind of make it fit. And you can also see the size while you're watching me, you can kind of see the size that is typical for the type for this size of project. This is a great size to start doing my, uh, my pieces because I want to be able to incorporate as many pieces of fabric as possible because it makes it look more interesting that way. The more fabric, the greater the variety of fabric, um, the more interesting your collage will be. Now also sometimes when I uh, score the paper on the back, it will pull some little threads out and I like to trim those threads so that I don't have any loose threads. What pen do you use to trace the pattern on the paper? Oh, great question. So somebody asked which what pen do I use? Um, I actually recommend using a pencil. A uh, pen will not, um, won't work, it won't stick, and it will smear and make a mess. So don't use, don't use pen, use a pencil. Do you trace the pattern slash fabric? Do I trace the pattern onto the steam seam or fabric? No. So I only will trace the pattern the mushroom, this little guy, onto my steam -a seam But you can, so once I, so I'm using this tracing that you see here, and um, that's the only time I will trace something. What was the fabric treated with? Um, the fabric has not been treated with anything. The fabric uh, does have steam -a seam on it. So, so that's what's on the back here. This is, um, and steam -a seam is included in your kit if you purchase the kit, or you can purchase steam -a seam uh, by, we, we sell three yard rolls on our website. So if you intend to do um, a few collage projects, I recommend getting the box of the steam -a seam. Um, maybe Amelia, you could grab that so they know what it looks like. But box. the, yeah, box of steam -a seam. Otherwise, if you just wanna give this a try, Get the kit because it's got the uh, it's got the a packet of steam seam which contains five sheets and that's enough to get your uh, all of the fabric that's included in this kit. It's uh, that's enough to get the the all of this fabric prepared and maybe a little bit of leftover. Okay, so this is the this is the steam -a seam that we sell. So this is three yards, it's awesome. This is the product that I recommend and you can even see a little bit of my work on the box. Thank you, love. Do you pre-wash your fabric? I do not pre-wash my fabric and 
the reason that I don't is because I don't want I don't like to make extra work for myself. Um, when you wash fabric, like especially all these these pieces, l l will you grab a kit of the fabric opened that we haven't yeah. packaged yet, so that I can explain um, this. Sorry, one of these kits. Yeah. So I want to just show you. Part of the reason I wouldn't wash this fabric is because it's in a six inch squares. And if you throw that into the wash, you're gonna fray all these edges and then you're gonna have to iron it all. And that's just an extra step that I don't wanna do. I, I just think it's too, uh, it's too much work. So I don't pre-wash my fabric. Okie dokie, let's see here where I'm going with this. Amelia, do you want to keep asking me questions? So everyone, I welcome your questions as I'm working. I'm sure we have lots of new people on today. Okay, so if we have, how many people have we got watching right now? 104 people. So as you have questions, um, please go ahead and ask your questions. My daughter, Amelia, who works for me is, uh, she's moderating. So she'll ask me the questions while I work. What kind of parchment is used for the drawing? Um, great question. So I prefer Reynolds parchment paper, which is the same thing as baking paper. I don't know that they sell parchment paper in, in Europe, but it's baking paper. There's another name for it too. Here's here's what this is. This is the same thing that we use to line our cookie sheets. And the reason that we use this is because it is a non-stick heat resistant surface. And both of those qualities are really important as I'll show you. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish up this cap. I've got a few more little spots. So you can see I've got a few little holes, like I wanna put something there, something here. Um, and then we'll keep working down the mushroom. Do you isn't know? sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, isn't it amazing how quickly this comes together? Like it's it's just amazing how simple this is. It looks so complex because of the variety of fabric, and that's kind of the key. Fabric selection is really, really important when you're doing collage, and um that's what's so fun about this kit because it's probably stuff that you you wouldn't have picked out but I picked it out for you because I know there's a secret formula for picking out fabric and if you're interested in learning more about my secret formula for picking fabric for your collage you can join me in one of my webinars where I talk about color theory and design principles of design uh, we have one tomorrow that webinar is sold out we've got another one that has a couple more seats in January um, but I think those are helpful if you want to learn more about fabric selection. Amelia, you had a question. What do you was always the... work from dark to light? Uh, that's a great question. Somebody asked, do I always work from dark to light? Um, I would say most of the time that is true, that I go from the darkest to the lightest. Um, and the reason for that is because that sets my palette. My, I know then that nothing is gonna be darker. I'm not gonna use any darker fabric than this. And it just makes it easy to, to work that way. But that's not necessarily, I always break my own rules. Okay, so now let's start adding some of the bottom of the mushroom. So far, so good, huh, guys? I think. Now you'll see that I scratch the back of the of the paper, and that just ensures that um, that scores the. Look how I use my tweezers to pull. I want to put that gray fabric underneath everything else. There.
um, as I as I was saying, scoring the paper back here makes it easy to peel the paper off like this. I feel like we should have some, some music going in the background, Amelia. Crank up my music. Um, <laughs> Amelia. No. Um, <laughs> do you like my music, Amelia? I do like your music. Oh, I thanks. I don't want to, I don't want to cause any distractions. Okay. Well, fine. But this is a perfect time to turn on a book or a podcast or your music. Let's see here. See how it's important that these pieces are not stuck down because I can still manipulate things. Let's just make that stay there. Is it better to cut the fabric pieces sympathetic to the item's shape or is random better? Uh, that's a great question. So I think as I'm working on the outside edges of a uh, design, it's probably kind of important to keep them, you know, make them the f rounded, follow the shape. But then in here, you can kind of see that I like the look of the random uh random cuts. I think it looks kind of artistic. Um, I, I, I really like that look. So the shape, it, it is interesting. You will kind of fall into your own, um, your own shape, which becomes your fingerprint on your, on your collage. And just don't overthink that's too dark, isn't it? That little one right there. Let's pull that out. Either that or let's do maybe a longer piece here. Okay, how are the visuals looking, guys? Can you see everything okay? Okay. Okay, aside from the little uh, white pieces that we're gonna put on this, I think this is looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna create a little bit of a shadow with the darker gray so that the mushroom cap looks like it's uh, casting a shadow on the stem of the mushroom. Do you have any tips for keeping your fabric clean? I, I do find when I'm working on bigger pieces, sometimes it can start to look a bit grubby with the handling. Oh, um, wash your hands? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Maybe if you're using, I don't know what adhesive what she uses, but maybe if she uses glue, that can get messy. Yeah, so. Very clean, though. Yes, Steam -a Seam is kind of, it stays quite tidy. So. She, there was a, a comment that asked, how do you keep your fabric clean? It seems to get kind of grimy, and that might be because of the, the adhesive that you're using. Um, with this particular method, my I, I call this my parchment pressing method. Um, the parchment pressing method requires the use of steam -a seam There's not another uh, fusible web that I recommend there may be something else that works, but because this is my pattern and I've written it, I say use what I use. Um, I haven't I haven't created this design with other products in mind. Um, so people do often ask me, "Can I use oh Misty Fuse or uh, what are some of the Heat and Bond? Can I use those other products?" And my answer is. Um, probably, um, I don't use them, but you may have some that you want to get rid of and you might want to use it. So what I recommend is checking out my, I have a YouTube video where I tested and compared different fusibles. So it's on this channel and 
I would check that out. And then the other ultimate, um, the ultimate tip that I would recommend is just test it. So if you test using Misty Fuse or Heat and Bond and you decide that that's going to work fine, great, use it. For me, I really, I really need to have the temporary stick that uh, Steamacine provides. See how I hold it like this? That's got that temporary stick. So that is super helpful in what we're what we're doing. When shading, do you put the darker fabric? color behind or on top of the previous fabric? A layering, order of layering. Um, generally, I, I think I probably keep the lighter fabrics on top like this. Um, when I'm building up a highlight, that just seems to make sense. Even though you may see uh, the darker fabric might show through on this one. That doesn't bother me. If that bothers you, then you can change the order of layering. But um, generally, I don't worry about the order of layering very much. Except in this case, for instance, I want to see more of that white that I've got going there. So I'm going to tuck this underneath that lighter one. Um, Amelia, I think I'm going to need a little bit more of that fabric if you can, because remember folks, I have done, this is the fourth mushroom that I've created with this pack of uh, fabric. So you will have plenty of fabric in your little mushroom kit to make multiple multiple mushrooms. And as I'm demonstrating, you have plenty of time too because this thing comes together really quick. So as I said, we have a few more kits in stock, I believe, for the mushroom kit. But there will come a time where we won't continue to carry the mushroom kit. Enough. Yep, that's plenty. Thanks. I want to join your Facebook group, but I haven't received an invitation yet. Oh, okay. So if you want to join my Facebook group, um, you don't actually need an invitation. Just go to the Facebook group, which is Collage Quilter Academy, and request to join. And it will ask you some questions and answer the questions. And if you are not a bot or a spammer, then we generally will approve your request. So we would love to have you. Caroline might not have gotten around to Facebook. Right. We don't, um, we don't. She'll do them today. Yeah, she'll. she'll we have. We don't do that every single day, so that might be the problem. Um, speaking of the Facebook group, it's been really fun. We've we've kind of we've had a a uh, what do I say campaign or a Christmas yeah we've had this sharing. Christmas community sharing thing going on. And we've loosened up the rules for the Facebook group temporarily. That will be ending soon uh, where we invited people to, we wanted to see what else people were creating for Christmas. So anything that was a handmade item, whether it was collage quilts or uh, baked goods, um, what else have we seen? Other type of quilts, felt ornaments, we've seen all kinds of stuff. Um, and that's been really fun to see what everybody's making for Christmas. And uh, normally the rules of the group are you can only um, post something, a collage quilt made, made using one of my patterns. And we temporarily suspended that rule. We'll, we will be going back to that because... It's important for the people who are making my projects to have a place where they can come and receive support and help and share what they've done. 
So we really like that group. We really love to be able to, to see what people are doing and to provide any help that they might need. If It's a great place to answer, answer questions or ask your questions and we can, the community can answer. And um, yeah, so I hope you'll join the Facebook group, which is Collage Quilter Academy. Now we also are the creators of the Collage Quilter Facebook group. And that group is just more of a wide general. Now I've used this fabric a couple times and I wanna put something else different. So I'm not gonna put that right there. Anyway, the Collage Quilter Facebook group is uh, another great community. We have much, it's a much more open, <clears throat> excuse me, open community where you can post anything that's collage related, collage quilt related. And um, so that one does not require that you are using my patterns. We see lots of people's designs. We see Laura Heine's patterns in there, which are, beautiful and so that's a fun group to join as well there we go again I don't want to put that in there how's that looking I think since I've kept everything up and down with this mushroom so far I'm going to just continue that so let's put a little bit of let's put a little bit more of this How's the mushroom looking? Do we think we need to make any changes? I will add the, the white in just a minute on the mushroom cap. So does anybody out there know the reason that we, why this type of mushroom has become associated with Christmas? So if you look it up on Google, uh, apparently the red and white um, the red and white mushroom cap for a couple reasons obviously it's Christmas colors and the other reason is uh, this type of mushroom is generally found in a forest where you might find Christmas trees so evergreen trees it's found at the base of evergreen trees now I don't um, I don't think I've ever seen one of these types of mushrooms in person. Have you, Amelia? Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they grow. Probably, Probably in Europe. Yeah, yeah. They're sure cute though, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. So I'm impressed you're doing collage upside down. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Those are my mad skills. Um, okay, let's add a few dots. Do we want to change anything in here? Someone said they're in Denmark. Oh, they're in Denmark. Cool, cool. Okay, I think this looks good. What do you guys think? Um, do I wanna change any of these pieces? Maybe if we pull this one out, let's just see what happens if we... Alaska. And Alaska? Is that what somebody Alaska, said? Alaska. I don't know if that's what they're saying, where, they're, where they themselves are from or where the mushrooms are from. <laughs> do you cut your fabric with the grain or cross grain? Oh, great question. I've never gotten that one before. I don't pay any attention when, um, well, I mean, okay. So when we're cutting fabric for a kit, it's with the grain. Um, but when I am cutting fabric for collage, I don't pay any attention to the grain of the fabric. That's why, again, it's just this most liberating process because I don't concern myself with those little tiny details. I knew, that. I knew they'd be in Germany. Germany, yay. They're in Germany, of course they are. Because Germany is kind of where Christmas originated, isn't it? I think, I think that's, I think that's so. One more little a little bit right there or you know what this is a perfect time to start doing our little our little white dots for this do the dark fabrics go in the dark places on the pattern and same with the medium and light fabrics yes okay so that's a good question she's asking do the dark fabrics go where the dark fabrics are indicated on the guide 
Yes, the answer is yes. So that's the whole idea with all of my patterns. They've been, all of them are printed in shades of gray to guide your fabric selection so that you know, oh, I need, I need fabric that goes from dark to light, right? And then um, it, gui it guides your fabric placement as well. So I have found that with these little dots, these little white dots, just do as many as you want. And I kind of like to make them funky shapes because we're looking, it would probably be, oh, and I'll show you the other thing that I've kind of discovered after doing this three, four times. This is the fourth mushroom. Use some of the gray fabric over here where it's getting darker. That will <clears throat> emphasize the dark side of the mushroom. And the darkest gray, I'm gonna do a little bit of that too. Isn't this fun, guys? It's kind of like uh, watching a fire. It's a little bit mesmerizing to watch somebody work live. So I hope you enjoy this. We'll do this once in a while, but it's easy to do with a project like this that's just a small, fun little project. It's a little more difficult if the collage requires a couple hours to get done. That would be boring. That's why most of the time we will do videos, recorded videos, so we can speed up the process. Okay, other questions or observations? Someone said, I'm working on the raven. I find when I'm working on it, I get concerned about the details. So when I put it down and come back to it, I'm always impressed with how it looks, even though it's so random. Yep, I I agree. I think you need to, ha you need to number one, you need to trust this process. You need to trust your fabric selection. I think once you've selected your fabric, the rest is pretty easy. Um, you just have to trust the process that it's going to work out. And we are always our own worst critics. So if you feel like you're getting kind of bogged down in the, in the weeds of the project, there are two things I recommend. Number one, walk away. Don't look at it for a day. Number two, take a photo, take a photo with your phone of the pro of the of what you're working on and look at it through your phone and you will be amazed because your phone provides a different, uh, a different, it just provides a fresh perspective. And I do that all the time when I'm working on a collage, I will take multiple photos through my phone. It helps me to identify anything I want to change as well as helps me see that it's, that it might be working. Let me get a drink, sorry. Okay. More I questions? think, yeah, more questions. I think we're about done. I see that you're sticking the pin for scoring into your background. Do you have a wool mat under the parchment? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so this is a little work surface that I made, and this is what I recommend. It works really well. <clears throat> so my parchment paper is here. This is a piece of, do you want to go grab one of yeah, those? I'm grab one of these right here. So um, I like to have a piece of foam core. This is a really great size because you can see that it's very manageable. Um, it's good for working at your kitchen table or whatever. Um, I've just taped a piece of felt. Now, if you can find wool felt, that's the best. But um, so foam core is used, you can find it at uh, framing places. We get ours at Hobby Lobby in the framing department. It's just the quarter inch foam core covered in, in felt. Um, the foam core allows me to put pins in the, you know, everything so I can hold it down. And the felt protects the foam core from the heat of my little iron. So Amelia, do you see anything else that I need to change or work on here? I think I'm going to do one more little dot right there. 
Once I sign up for the newsletter, where do I find the free mushroom pattern? So if you go to the website and um, collagequilter.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, there is a link. It says free pattern. So you can go there. But if you sign up on that link, um, you'll be, we'll send it to you. We'll email the pattern to you. Um, and if you sign up through one of our Facebook groups and provide your email address, we will send you the pattern. Okay. So what do you think? Yay or nay? I think it looks pretty darn good. Check your spam. Say that. Yeah. And check your spam. So if you want, I guarantee if you sign up and you give us an email address that's spelled correctly and it doesn't have um, errors in it, we send it out. It's sent out automatically. So um, if you don't get it, please look in your spam folder before you email us because I guarantee it that it has been sent. Okay, so now you can see what I'm doing is I'm taking my hot little iron and I'm just pressing all these pieces together and also pressing them to the parchment paper. At this point, I don't want to use any steam. So I'm just using this dry iron to ensure that all of these pieces stick together. And when they're all stuck together, then I can peel this off in one piece and put it on my background fabric. Millie, do you want to go grab a piece? Of, here's a background fabric. Do you want to use that or another one? Will you, does it need to be pressed? Probably. Yeah, we press that real quick and then we'll demonstrate peeling this off. And at this point too, it's really um, easy to unpin this, take it over to your larger iron because this becomes, it's a little tedious to press it like this. Is the iron hot? Mm -hmm. Will you just run it? I'm going to give you this and you can um, Okay. Will you iron that? I think I'd like to try and move the camera to my face. You're not going to show Or I can put that. my face down here like this. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, I'm not going to show you putting it on. The yeah, camera. no, bring it. Yeah, I will. Bring it over. Okay. I just feel weird not talking to the camera, you guys. Okay, here we go. And that looks great. So in the kit comes a 14 inch square. We've got this fabric um, or this fabric. So either one will be in your kit. The mushroom fabric itself will be all pretty all the same. So anyway, here we go. We're gonna peel this off now. So I, the way I like to think of this is just peeling, using my, my fingernail on the back, kind of peeling the parchment paper away from the mushroom. Is the iron on medium high side? Oh, it's probably high. So here it is, and it's a little bit like a sticker at this point because all of those, um, let me get these off. Here's my mushroom. He's a sad mushroom at the moment. He's gonna perk up in just a second though when we give him his new home. Okay, so here's the background fabric. Now the mushroom has, it's kind of cool. It's like a sticker now that we've created. It has that temporary fusible still on it. That's why I really like Steema Seam. And I like light Steema Seam too, to be precise. Now, I can finger press it, and if I'm not happy, I can still pull it up and reposition it. But there we go. And now what I'll do is, here's a little trick for, and then we have me a pencil. Thanks, love. Okay, so I found this to be a really fun little way to make some of the grass. Just turn it over, and on the back, you can just draw some little sprigs of grass like that and then use that as kind of a little template. Chris, 
please explain the difference between wax and parchment paper? Oh, okay. So yeah, wax paper is different than parchment paper. Um, parchment paper, again, has been treated uh, with silicone. It's not wax, it's silicone. It's designed to be non-stick. Um, so that's the difference. Wax paper, if you stick wax, the other, the other thing too is parchment paper is the same on both sides. So it's got that non-stick feeling on both sides. Wax paper is waxy on one side and uh, paper on the other side. And if you put a parchment or if you if you start building a collage on wax paper, you will not be able to peel it off because wax paper, um, the the heat that's required to press these pieces together will cause them to stick to the wax. The wax will melt and you'll ruin your collage. So don't do that. Don't use wax paper. Don't use butcher paper. Just use parchment paper. Trust me on that. So now I'm just going to do some simple little blades of grass. And it's helpful to, um, to cut it, peel it. And then if I want to make, if I want to make thinner blades, do it without the paper. Freezer paper, not wax paper. What? Someone said you mean freezer paper, not wax. Oh, somebody said wax paper. Isn't wax paper the same as freezer paper? No, I don't. No, it's not. Okay. Is it? Let's see. Freezer paper. Um, no, I don't think wax paper and freezer paper are the same. They might be. They're similar, but they're not the same. I could be wrong. Freeze, freezer paper has wax coating. Freezer paper has. Yeah, it does. Um, I just don't know if it's the same. I'm not an expert. I don't know. I'm an expert in collage. All I know is use free, use parchment paper. Okay. Don't use butcher paper. Don't use. Someone said freezer paper is what I use. Well, don't. Oh, don't. Don't use freezer paper. You will ruin your collage. Trust me. Use parchment paper. Okay. Someone said wax paper and freezer paper are not the same. Okay. Thanks guys. Let me slide that up. So easy peasy, right? At this point, we're just making blades of grass. And you can just go hog wild and make as much grass as you want with the fabric that's enclosed. So I think we're good. Amelia, do you think you can put this on my face so that I can tell everybody hi and goodbye? so that I don't have to put my face it's on the... It's important to you. It's important to me to say goodbye. Okay, ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Can you? Okay. But, okay. Go, you can guys. do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. <laughs> hello, hello. All right. So I am just about finished. I have a few more, a few more little blades of grass. And we got this done lickety split. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because we are trying to put out great content that you will enjoy. And you can find me here live in my studio, sometimes recorded, but we I know you guys like to do live videos. Sometimes, sometimes we'll do recorded. But anyway, regardless, every Monday at 11 a.m. you will find a helpful video about textile collage here. So you can find my products patterns at collagequilter.com. And if you have any other questions, leave a comment. We will look at the comments afterwards, or you can email me at emily at collagequilter.com. Okay. Thanks for being here. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you next week. Amelia, you better turn me off. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>